All right, so for this response, I decided that I want to talk a little bit about the video game Minecraft. Now, I think that for the most part, video games are still relatively considered not very good teaching tools, and not every game, not every video game is going to be a very good teaching tool, to be completely honest. You're not going to have students play Call of Duty in the classroom, for example, because while it may be fun, it won't necessarily provide any insight into um, anything within the curriculum that you would like to address. And again, that's the same with any video game. But one game that might be an exception to that, depending on how you use it, is the video game Minecraft. Now, the way that Minecraft works is that it is a very open-ended game. It's called a sandbox game because you can literally create pretty much anything you want in there. And there is a special version of Minecraft called Minecraft EDU, which is specifically designed uh, for and by teachers for use within the classroom. So what I've got here is I've got the Minecraft EDU website, and I'll just give you a quick rundown on this, but uh, it's got about sections. It has information on the software and what you would need to do to be able to host the software, because if you are having your students play together in a cooperative sense, then you are going to need to uh, be able to host a server somewhere. Although, I just uh, discovered this, but uh, where is it? Here we go. Uh, apparently they are running some beta beta programs uh, to make it so that you don't have to do that anymore and you could just run it through them. So that's the service that they might uh, that Mojang might offer in the future. Um, what else? Uh, yeah, so we're talking about software. Software itself gives you a rundown of what exactly Minecraft EDU is. Some features of it, uh, they have, they do have discount purchases for, for teachers, uh, for qualifying schools, uh, bulk purchases as well. They make it very easy to get Minecraft into your classroom and relatively cheaply as well. Um, again, it talks about hosting in case you wanted to host your own server. Plenty of information there, and there's even more information available uh, through the rest of the internet. Lots of teachers on here in the community who would be able to help you out with that on the forums. So again, there'd be lots of teachers, lots of students here. And now this is the most exciting part, but under resources, this is uh, pretty much the most exciting part of the whole website. Because here in resources, it actually offers a library of worlds that teachers have created and what they've created created them for that uh, they've decided just to share with everybody. So the way this works is you can see you'd be able to filter it down by subject area, by age level, and this is a bit less important I think, but by world type as well. So adventure or story would be um, something having you or having your students actually run through pre-existing storylines um, to, to learn information. Um, some like observation, which you know by the sounds of it is just uh, just having them go in and see what they see. Puzzles, again, go in and have them solve specific puzzles. But again, this is this is less important, I think, than than uh, the subject and age level are. So say for example I want to teach something to do with science. I would tap on science, and here we go. We've got a few things. Now you can see, I mean, this is still a relatively new uh, project. I mean, the oldest maps that we have here are only from a year ago. So, I mean, it's still a relatively recent thing. There's not that many worlds, but there's uh, still enough to start from anyways. And say, again, so say I've got my science, and I want to teach specifically so, uh, grade 10 to 11 or 12. You can tap that, and there you go. It filters it down even further to things that I might want to teach. So what I've done is I've picked out a few real quick here. Uh, this one right here is probably the biggest and most impressive map that they've got on here. It's called Wor uh, Wonderful World of Humanities, and this was made by a social teacher, Eric Walker, who uh, basically went and created 
entire ancient worlds for students to be able to explore. So what I'm going to do here is just uh, go into the video quick and just uh, show you what he's built. So he's he's built all of this from scratch. Um, he's not the only one who worked on it, of course. He's brought in other people to help him, and other people have contributed as well. Um, but he has... Oh, I don't remember the list now, actually. But there was Mesopotamia, Egypt, Rome, ancient China. I used, just saw there Julius Caesar. And what happens is the students will go into these worlds and interact with NPCs, which are non-playable characters, and they will be able to get quests that uh, will send them all around the world, whichever world they're learning about in social studies. And so by going through this, the students aren't just learning about, say, ancient Egypt, they're actually there in ancient Egypt and getting to see it, interact with some of the locals who lived there at the time, and uh, learn directly from them. Um, another world we've got here is one called Paleontology, and I think this looks really cool. Basically what has happened is that uh, the teacher has gone and designed a giant skeleton underground, and the students have to go and excavate it, but of course they need to do this carefully, because if they uh, get too excited, then they might start damaging the skeleton itself as they're uncovering it. Um, so for a lower grade science class, a paleontology unit, or dinosaurs unit, that would be excellent. And this one was under art, although this one is kind of a very generic thing, and might also be um, be best used for students who are new to Minecraft as well. And basically what it is, is it is just a collaborative, collaborative building area, where each student, you're, you're able to assign lots as you can see here, to each student. And so if student A is working here and student B is working here, student B can't go and work uh, alter anything within student A's environment because that's where student A is working. <coughs> and uh, there, there are other modes as where, well where you can have the students work together. So this could be a good topic for di digital citizenship and ownership as well uh, to teach lessons on, well, sharing, uh, you know, respecting each other's property, each other's spaces, and and that sort of thing as well. So, uh, like I said, this is just a kind of very brief overview of what Minecraft EDU has to offer for schools. It's something that I really want to look into trying in my own classroom at some point, and I would recommend you all check it out because it is... Well, frankly, it's a very fun game. It's basically digital Lego. So if you enjoy playing with Lego, then you'll probably enjoy this. And so will your students. I can't imagine that anyone, any young student would risk having their Minecraft time taken away from them because it's uh, such a great experience. Anyways, though, uh, moral of the story is that le video games can be used for more than just entertainment. World of Humanities, in particular, has won all sorts of praise for the things that uh, it's able to accomplish. Uh, apparently students will even go and work on other worlds that they don't have uh, don't have to cover in class and they'll do it because it's fun and they'll learn as they go. So anyways that's that. Uh, have a good summer everyone.